Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you for joining me once again. So, second round of Six Nations is completely done and dusted. France coming away with a 22 to 16 point win over Scotland. Hard fought game. Scotland will feel not hard done by. They feel like this is one that probably got away from them. They were just battered physically. The French came after them at scrum time. The French dominated. Scotland didn't have a lot of answers. I think it was six penalties early on from scrums and a free kick as well. France, as I said, just battered Scotland off the park. Basically, Scotland, they got themselves in good positions, but they coughed up the ball just too many times. Stuart Hogg scoring another good try. He's just he's a man on fire at the moment. I really hope that he keeps that going throughout the rest of the season to get on that Lions tour, to get that, make that 15 jersey his own, because at the moment, it's his to lose, uh, but he's doing a good good job. In this episode, guys, I'm also, we're going to talk about a bit of a midterm report for each of the teams in the Six Nations, how they're going against maybe how they you would expect them to go. We'll sort of compare that, and also got a bit of an updated Lions uh, 15 for players who have just played in this competition. So I'm going to disregard anyone who hasn't played through injury and that kind of thing, just players who have been in their best position who have played in the Six Nations. So let's start with a midterm report. We start with Italy. Italy, I don't know what to say about these guys, to be honest. I don't know where their heads are at. I don't know what's going on. They've got an excellent coach. So that's not the issue. Strength and depth, I've tried to talk about it before. I don't know what the issue is. I'm going to make a video about Italy and try and delve a little bit deeper into the problem, see what's going on. At the moment, in the Six Nations, I can't give any, them anything but an F, to be honest with you. They've been extremely disappointing, uncreative, been hammered twice in a row at home as well. You thought it'd leave a bit more of a fight than that at home. They haven't done. They've lost to, to be fair, a, a decent Welsh team and a very strong Ireland team who are reeling off the back of a defeat. But that's not an excuse, and I really hope they'd be more competitive, especially given the victory over South Africa in the... In the autumn as well, that just hasn't happened, unfortunately. Okay, let's move on to Ireland. It's a bit of a random order. Going into Six Nations, everyone thought Grand Slam contenders. They they would just cruise pretty much until they maybe got to Wales game or England game, and then that'd be a bit of a decider. They obviously lost the first game to Scotland. They've come back and they've absolutely blitzed Italy, but Italy are sort of a bit of a weak inside at the moment. I'm going to give Ireland a B minus. They played well. And they've dominated the first two games that they played, but they lost to Art. They lost to Scotland in that first game. They'd be very disappointed with that. They haven't quite gotten to where they want to be, I don't think, yet. It will come. This week break probably doesn't help them, but you can expect them to come back firing in week three. Moving on to Scotland. Now, Scotland have been the team where everyone has sort of looked to progress. And they have done. No doubt about that. That win against Ireland was fantastic. They took their chances. They defended hard. They went to France. Paris, a very difficult place to, to go and play. I'm glad that England played at Twickenham this year and not at Paris. I'm going to give Scotland a B plus. They're on the verge of, of doing something fantastic and something great. And they, they are somewhere where Scottish rugby has not been for a long, long time. And they are on the verge of doing something amazing. They're scrum. You can't be a dominant force with scrum that gets dismantled every week. That has got to be sorted out, and that's the one reason why I haven't put them high in the list. And that costs them against France. That scrum, and I wouldn't say their lack of physicality because the Scottish are extremely physical, but the French just basically just came onto the pitch and just beat them up for 80, 80 minutes. If they got their scrum sorted, they'd be two wins from two, and they'd be looking at a possible grand slam. They're going, to go, they're going to play England this year and this is one of the best chances in a long time that they can put a mark on, it on, on England. England, the way that they're playing is up front at the moment, are going to take Scotland apart. And the back lines are fairly even. Scottish back line has been looking pretty dangerous and Stuart Hogg is a player that pinpointed and I think he could be a game changer. But they're not going to be able to do the damage those backs unless the forwards sort themselves out and figure out what's going on up front because that is a major problem and it is the one thing that's holding this Scotland team back. Moving on to France. France was lost a very really close encounter to England. They then won a very close game against Scotland. The England game at Twickenham, you think they probably went a bit conservative a bit too soon, which probably cost them. I'm going to give France a B. They have become a lot more consistent. I've said that before. I think they're building... They're building just to something. And I think the World Cup 
2019. By the time that comes around, I think that France team is going to reach a certain level, and I think I think they're going to shock some some teams. I think they're building. They're not building particularly quickly, but they're brewing, and I think they're going to be on the verge of something. This year's Six Nations is good. Next year's is going to be incredible if this trend continues. So yeah, France have got a B, but they're going to keep improving. Moving on to England. This one here. England have not played well. They narrowly beat France. They narrowly beat Wales. They haven't played well. However, they've won. And that's the big difference. Is yes, they haven't played well, but they've won. They, have they played in the way they like to play? No. And in way, against Wales, they got dominated. France, they made mistakes. They didn't play well against a French team. We didn't exactly play well themselves. England, in my, I was going to give them a C. I think it's a bit harsh. They've won two out of two. I'll give them a B minus. Same sort of score as Ireland. They've come into this competition hoping to probably dominate teams more. They haven't done that. I'm worried about when they go and play Ireland. I'm a little bit worried when they go and play Scotland. If Scotland get on top. But as I said before, I think England scrum is a bit of a get out of jail free card in that game. So the England Ireland game is one that I'm really looking forward to. England being, in my eyes, a bit disappointing. They were lucky to get away with that win against Wales. And it shows actually they're switched on for the full 80. So that is positive signs going forward. Last but certainly not least, Wales. Wales have come into the Six Nations in a bit of a sticky patch, a bit of up and down form. Not, where, not knowing where they're coming or going. They've got Rob Howley in charge, who's not their full-time coach the interim, but he's been around the setup long enough on the Gatlin to know really what their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, and really how to play. They've tried to evolve their game away from what's called the Warren Ball smash and crash. They've tried to evolve their game from the Warren Ball smash and crash. Howley's tried to implement maybe another style of playing. It's coming in slowly. It worked in patches against England. Wales at the best when they play what's in front of them. They do play okay in structure, but structure is very easy to defend against. Wales, one of their great strengths is playing what's in front, looking up heads up rugby. That's always been one of Wales' big strengths. I think they need to get back to playing that a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to move on to my updated Lions 15. Well, I say updated, I'm still standing by what I've chosen in my previous video. However, this Lions 15 is the team that have played in this tournament. Um, so if you're getting guys out with injury and that kind of thing. Okay, let's start with uh, front row, Jack McGrath of Ireland. The guy's been very, very good, very solid. In at hooker, he's had a little bit of limited game time. But I think for me at the moment, he's he's one of the standout hook Northern Hemisphere. Jamie George, he does make an impact. He doesn't look like he should be an international rugby player, but he's a really, really good player. And he makes an impact whenever he gets on the pitch. Furlong, again, Irish prop. He was in my original pick of mine. Um, he's still there. He's playing very, very well. Second rows, same as what I showed before. We've got Alan Wynne Jones, Joe Launchbury, both of which are just are playing out of their skins at the moment, both of which are playing extremely well. And they're getting some, they've generated some really good form and momentum going into the tour. Blind type flanker, CJ Stander, for me, playing very, very well. Got a hat trick against Italy. Atoje is not playing badly, he's finding his feet. And actually, I'm calling him Mystic Meg, but the fact that he's starting at six for me is very pleasing. I think that's where his future lies. Seven, I've got to Brick. Again, tackling machine, playing very, very well. Good link-up play. Excellent player. Number eight, I've got Ross Moriarty. The guy's a brick wall. England, he absolutely smashed England on the, on the weekend. Defensively, he's a rock. He gets around the park. He's a very, very good player. Nine, I've got Reese Webb. It was Connor Murray before. I'm going to go with Reese Webb at the moment. I think he offers something just a bit more at the moment. There's a bit more spark about him. He's on the go all the time. Ten, I was thinking long and hard about this one. Finn Russell is doing a good job up at Scotland, definitely. I was going to think what to put about, think about putting Aaron Farrell there, but then I'm struggling for 12 options. So I'm going to go down bigger at the moment. He wasn't even in my thinking of the squad, or Paddy Jackson was there too, but... Paddy Jackson is too much of an understudy at the moment. For me, he played very well against Italy. We'll see how it goes in his next game if Sexton's not back. Dan Bigger for me is in there. He had a very, very good game against England. If he keeps on the upward trajectory, he could well be on that flight. A left wing, Liam Williams, natural finisher. Very fast. I like him. 12, Aaron Farrell. I'm trying to think of any other 12s that are sort of really making an impact. So Aaron Farrell's in there for me. Jonathan Davies in the outside centre. At the moment, you compare him to Jonathan Joseph. He's sort of he's got him a little bit. Uh, I don't know if that's just the physicality he brings. Jonathan Joseph whizzed out some nice-looking passes against Wales, but his running game seems to have gone a bit off. He's sort of a bit 
stuff for rumour. Not sure if that's the way England playing or not. I don't know what's going on there, but he seems a little bit off. I'm not sure. Um, Seymour, Tommy Seymour on the other wing, and Stuart Hogg at fullback. That is my updated line. So, guys, if you've got any comments about the things I've spoken about, that Lions 15, the team ratings I've given, please feel free to comment. Let's get a discussion going. If you liked it, give it a like and subscribe for more. I'll catch you next time. Cheers, guys.